Cool. Um, yeah, we don't have too much time, but as I'm trying to figure out how to reshare my screen, if people want to share in the chat, any big takeaways that came up in your table that you, you think the group could benefit from? And now I'll figure out my screen share. All right, nothing in the chat yet. But I hope that was helpful just to both apply some of the practices to your group, uh, to your own work, and also think about people you could potentially invite. Oh, and we have a great uh, delegate and great pathways. Thanks, Kavian and Caleb. Yeah, thanks, Dave. It's a great one. Yeah, delegation is a great way to share power and to shift power. So that's great. Oh, software documentation that is approachable to a wide diversity of groups. Yeah, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of that. Testing, yes. It makes it much easier for other people to jump into your work if it's well tested. Yeah, it was a bit difficult to start to think where. Yeah, and sometimes I, it'll take a little bit longer to come up with something. All right, I'm gonna move on. Um, I'm glad my chat prompt work, but a lot of groups are working on this technology, or not this technology, but on this problem. Um, I just wanna call it AI Now, uh, FATML, Partnership on AI, Algorithm Watch. I'm probably missing a few more, um, but especially AI Now, they put out a paper on um, discriminating algorithms that I'd, I recommend you check out if you're at all interested in this topic. And I do work at Mozilla, where our mission is to ensure that the internet is a global public resource open and accessible to all. And we do this a couple of ways. Uh, the first way is through building products like Firefox, which you may be familiar with. Um, and then the second way is through movement building, uh, which is where I sit in the org. And we do, I do think that like having, sorry, I, excuse me. I drank a, a lot of Perrier. I was telling Yo this before we started. Um, I really love Perrier, but I get really burpy. So I, I apologize. <laughs> sorry, everyone, that was maybe TMI. But um, I do work on this movement building side and we do want this open and publicly accessible internet. And I, I think to get there, we do need to be able to trust the technology that we're building um, and we do need to be anti-racist or to, to not just be neutral, but to really be shifting power so that we can be open and inclusive where everyone can join and everyone can collaborate. So here's um, an article by Kathy Pham. I mentioned her already um, with the, the two Google Street View images, um, but she, uh, yeah, if you're at all interested in this talk, I took a lot of ideas from her, from things like tech ethics isn't you, um, to honoring the, the expertise. I'd recommend you check this out. Um, but if you want big tech, change what classes are required for computer science degree. So she's working on the Responsible CS Challenge where she works with computer science um, departments to really try to give computer science students that interdisciplinary research so that they do make friends at least with people who know things about the broken windows theory and other ethical challenges so that they can have these kinds of water cooler conversations that have a, a big effect in what they're building. Um, so if you, yeah, check that out and check out the Responsible Computer Science Challenge if you're interested. Um, I work on uh, MozFest, the Mozilla Festival, a lot of times. Come with an idea, leave with the community. Um, but this is where we do gather people, convene people who are doing this work. Uh, it's set for March 2021, both Amsterdam and virtual. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And um, I didn't have anything to announce right now, but we'll soon be announcing different ways you can be working towards uh, trustworthy AI or ethical tech leading up to the festival. So we are putting together some things like like working groups and different um, different virtual ways you can participate. So you don't have to wait till March 2021. So if you're interested in anything I talked about, um, drop me a line. Uh, I'm Abby at MozillaFoundation.org or just keep an eye out and we'll be announcing stuff next couple of weeks. And then finally, we did uh, publish a white paper on building trust for the AI and what we think that means as Mozilla. And like I said before, like our mission, the mission that I shared is really big and it's not something that we can achieve on our own. I think we realize we need an entire movement, which is why we work so much on movement building. Um, so we do wanna hear your thoughts on, on the strategy that we've laid out and how we think we'll get to trust for the AI um, or in like more trust for the tech. So, yeah, feel free to read this, but then also publish your own response um, or you can email me your response. Um, we do want to make sure we are collaborating with the right people so that we can get there. So I'm going to leave you with, uh, yeah, just those three points again. Uh, bias in code does affect diversity in science and diversity in science really affects the code that we're making. 
uh, tech ethics is not new. Uh, yeah, you all know this. And then finally, open source practices can shift power. It doesn't always shift power, but um, I hope you can sort of view it in this light of shifting power now. So huge thanks to many people on this list who uh, gave me slides. They talked these ideas with me. I appreciate each and every one of you. And thank you so much. So there is my Twitter handle at Abby Cabs. Um, if you want to be put in touch, it's probably the easiest way to get in touch. Or if you have questions, if you're watching the recording and you have questions, that's a good way to ask questions. Um, but now I think we have plenty of time for questions. Amazing. Thank you, Abby, so much for a really inspiring talk uh, and also for the extra little interactive session that made it just a little bit more special. Uh, so we do have a few questions. Um, I will go from the top ones down for now. So, Abby, um, OK, I'm trying to get top ones down, but they keep on moving. <laughs> Can you speak to the fear that might arise when thinking new people will change something you already like, perhaps the conference format and culture, for example? Yeah, and I'll, I'll say it will change, um, but it will be better. <laughs> I think there, there is a fear there and it's, wow, the, they do keep changing, <laughs> they move, the questions do keep moving. <laughs> yeah, it, I'd say if you're trying to convince someone to invite others in, um, you can point to a lot of the research that shows that like diverse groups make better products or, or um, yeah, you can point to things like that. Um, but I'll say it is a little scary, but be open to that fear, maybe. Awesome. Uh, so next question we have from uh, Carrie Gannot is for finding out how underrepresented groups are using a product, you would have to collect that information. Is that likely to turn yeah. off your users? Yeah, that's something I was thinking about when I was, I was trying to think of how to use that passive listening as a, um, as a way to shift power. And I'd say of all of them, that's probably the least, the less easiest way to shift power. I'd say, yes, you would need to collect that information if you wanted to prove it for just that specific group. But if you can do it in a way that they actually consent to it, so it's opt in, and you show that you're, you're why you're doing this um, and actually give them a better product because of that, so, um, I think that makes sense. Um, you might wanna start with just maybe interviewing specific people, just ask how can I do, make this better for you rather than uh, making everyone opt in to something um, and then using that as a jumping off point before you gather data in that more passive way. But yeah, that's a good, good point. Awesome, thank you. So we have a question from Nate saying, do you have any tools for convincing people who may not be receptive that these ideas should be central to our processes and not just good ideas that we should do? Um, yeah, that's changing people's minds. And I do think stories are the best way to change people's minds around this. So t sharing, that's why I like sharing like Kathy's anecdote about the, the street view uh, safety rating. But I'd say, yeah, find stories that they gel with or and point them to resources like books um, or presentations or articles. Uh, yeah, I, I do think it is central, but it is easy to just think of like, oh, we, we have to be diverse and inclusive because that's what we're supposed to do. But it, it does make everything better. Yeah, so that wasn't a real answer. If other people have suggestions to specific things they can point to, put that in the chat. I think I'd love to see that too. Yeah, agreed. I think this is a question a lot of us would love to see some more answers to. Yeah, OK, yeah. so we have two more questions. I think we have enough time. So um, Abby, groups may be underrepresented are underrepresented because they have no access to Wi-Fi or the internet or because tech is not available, e.g. in rural areas, or they cannot afford it. How can we address this gap? Yeah, and that's that's a tricky one. I know some conferences are offering um, like stipends or like um, offering to buy purchase data plans for people. If, if you look at RightsCon, I believe they're doing something around that uh, just to make it a little easier, especially in today's age where conferences are virtual. Um, giving them, yeah, a little bit more data so that they can access these things. Um, on a bigger scale, this is, I know Mozilla has another fellowship program that's focused on um, open internet hardware in Africa, really trying to address that. Um, so putting more funding into things like that, but it is a big problem and the, the tech gap is real. Um, so be, I'd say when you are putting on meetings or when you are releasing 
your code and stuff. Um, just think about how people with less reliable internet would be able to access this. Maybe they can down th download things offline or watch things afterwards on YouTube with the lower bandwidth connection thing. I've, I've lost my words, but um, there are a few ways you can make it a bit more accessible. Fantastic, thanks. Uh, so I think possibly the last question is, can you speak to the balance between bringing new people into the fold versus supporting completely new initiatives by new people? That's interesting. I think with either one, you can, I think if you start a new initiative, it might still fall into the same problems as before. If you're, well, the, sorry, the question disappeared. <laughs> um, yeah, but if you're bringing in new people, that's a nice way to extend, like to extend some of that power that the group has already amassed um, by bringing new people in. I don't know. I think it just depends on a case by case basis. And yeah, I, I don't think there's a, a one, one size fits all. If you want to follow up, Jolene, if I'm not understanding your question, uh, please do. Okay, I think we have uh, probably um, had a really great session. We've had some really, really interested and pertinent questions. So thank you everyone who has addressed the questions and also participated in sharing resources, etc. cetera. Um, and thank you, Abby, for such an amazing and inspiring talk. Uh, so I think next up, we will in a moment or two be having a um, wrap up with Nomi and Dave, is that right? This is a gentle prompt for Nomi and Dave to unmute at this point. <laughs> well, I think they're here. Well, thank you all so much. I'll mute now. Um, it was such a pleasure to hear from all of you. And I love the chat. I'll, I'll go through the chat after this.